future colleagues, our uh, future hope. الحقيقة أنا الثالث مرة بشوف التيم بتاع دكتور أنطوان للسنة الثالثة وببقى كل مرة بقول يا ترى المرة دي هيتكلموا عن إيه. Uh, I'm proud to invite uh, حبيبة إسماعيل مراد أشرف نورهان حاتم نوران جميل ندى حافظ رنا سعيد who is going to give us a very very interesting outstanding presentation about obesity obstructive sleep apnea is that okay or paternally uh, determined هو طبعا جروب اوف ستودنتس حبيبه في السادسه السنه دي والشباب البنات يعني باقيين في خمسه كانوا السنه اللي فاتت في رابعه دلوقتي هم في خمسه وحبيبه كانت في خمسه بقت في سته وهيقدموا برايمري ريسيرش كويشنير بيست عملناه في مدارس على اطفال اوبيس ومش هحرق بقى البرزنتيشن Good evening. My name is Miret Ashraf. My colleagues and I will talk about obstructive sleep apnea. Is it BMI or parentally determined? Ch childhood obesity is one of the most serious public health problems of the 21st century. It has been increasing dramatically. In 2016, the number of obese children below the age of five was estimated to be 41 million. We have two types of obesity, visceral and abdominal. Obesity is associated with obstructive sleep apnea, occurring in almost 60% of obese children. OSA is characterized by snoring, complete or partial obstruction of the upper airway, OSA is also associated with intermittent oxyhemoglobin desaturation, sleep fragmentation, and sleep disruption. And now we'll discuss some cases with my colleague, Noran Gamel. And now we have four examples from our study sample for four, for four children that came to us having the clinical symptoms that characterized OSA, as mentioned by Miret in the introduction. For each body mass index and waist circumference measurements has been done as indicators for obesity and also we asked the families about carrying the disease. And that's where we suppose that we have more than one risk factors including body mass index, waist circumference and genetic predisposition as indicators for, for probability of carrying such a disease. And here we have a first case for 13 year old boy with body mass index 32 and waist circumference 92 and no family history of OSA. And, for, and the second case for 14 year old boy with body mass index 29 and waist circumference 82 with paternal risk factor. And in the third case for 14 year old girl with body mass index 29 and waist circumference 80 with paternal risk factor. And in the fourth and in the last case for 12 year old girl with body mass index 29 and waist circumference 91 with maternal risk factor. And our cases will be discussed by Ran Said. And now we have more than one question of, uh, based on our previous cases. First, after assuming that we have more than one risk factor that will determine the probability of having such a disease, which of these risk factors will be the cornerstone in our diagnosis? Body mass index, waist circumference, or genetic predisposition? Second, which of these previous cases that were mentioned by Neuron will be screened first and earlier, and why? The obstructive sleep apnea, is it a body mass index determined or apparently determined? Based on our hypothesis, my colleague Norhan Hakim will answer us through the methodology and discussion based on our database collection. And now I'm going to discuss our methodology. Our study was performed on 100 obese children collected from different schools. The inclusion criteria was obesity defined by the body mass index above the 95th percentile per age and sex. The exclusion criteria were the presence of any concurrent systemic disease or syndrome such as hypothyroidism or steroid intake. This is Galay et al's modified questionnaire measuring four important parameters for our study. 
The first, in the presence or absence of hypertension through questioning or direct measurement. Here it was performed through direct measurement. Then history of snoring, reported by a room sharer for the mother, father, and the child. Third, definitive history of sleep apnea, also reported by the room sharer for the parents as well as the child. Last but not least is net measurement for the next circumference. And this questionnaire classified two objective parameters, which are the blood pressure and neck circumference, and two subjective ones reported by the room sharer, which was the history for snoring and sleep apnea. It also classified those patients according to their total score into high risk and low risk. The high risk patients of clinical score greater than or equal 75, and as this risk increases, the risk for sleep apnea increases and the need for sleep study also increases. The 100 obese children have mean body mass index 33 plus or minus 3. Their mean paternal sleep apnea clinic score was 61 plus or minus 16. Their mean waist circumference was 80 plus or minus 4. Their mean maternal sleep apnea clinic score was 45 plus or minus 15. And their sleep apnea clinic score themselves was 65 plus or minus 12. As we said before, that the high risk people are of score greater than or equal 75 and the low risk were less than 75. The interactive plot diagrams classify the high risk as one and the low risk as zero in order to calculate the sensitivity and specificity of each parameter. And accordingly, we determine which of them will be the predictive value that will have the highest sensitivity and specificity. The results show that the paternal sleep at the clinical score had the highest sensitivity and specificity and that the waist circumference was the second most important. And now my colleague Nada is going to discuss those implications. Now we're going to discuss these results in view of previously published works. At first we're going to discuss the effect of body mass index and waist circumference on uh, uh, snoring and specifically on uh, obstructive sleep apnea. Unlike the previously fixed belief that body mass index is directly proportional to um, uh, obstructive sleep apnea risk, we found in our study that uh, waist circumference <laughs> is a better predictor. Um, <coughs> which goes in agreement with the uh, Davinson et al. paper. There is, a cons uh, there is a conflicting data on the effect of maternal and paternal obstructive sleep apnea risk and whether it increases the risk in offsprings or not. Our study demonstrated that the major predictor of OSA risk is paternal. Holberg et al. demonstrated that or proved that um, snoring is mainly maternally mediated, while sleep apnea is um, rather a father-daughter relationship. And this may be, um, this was confirmed by our study, uh, which may be either due to X-linked dominant transmission, in which the gene responsible for genetic disorder is located on the X chromosome, so all father affected will have affected daughters more than affected son. Or through genomic imprinting, in which a, a code on a gene is silenced due to parental origin, such as in uh, prader willi syndrome and Angelman syndrome. Now we're going to discuss conclusion, limitations, and take-home messages with Habiba Snai. And now, as our, as, our stud, as our presentation is coming to an end, I would like to highlight the main points of our study. First of all, OSA risk has been found to be not directly proportional to the body mass index, while the waist circumference proved to be a better predictor of the OSA risk than the body mass index. This suggests linking between the obstructive sleep apnea with abdominal obesity and the differential fat distribution. But most importantly, there's strong evidence that OSA risk in offspring, especially in daughters, is directly proportional to the, to the paternal OSA risk. Scientists proved that there are about 15 genes responsible for our facial features, and about half of them are responsible for our nasal morphology. So we can deduce that the father-daughter transmission could be either X-linked, genomically imprinted, or it could be due to unknown mechanisms. As we all know that there's no study uh, com uh, completely flawless, so this brings us to the most important limitation of our study, which is screening the patients using symptomatology instead of a more object objective screening method, which is the polytomography. Uh, it's a test used for diagnosing sleep disorders in what's called uh, a sleep lab. It involves monitoring of the brain waves, eye movements, heart rate, breathing pattern, blood oxygen level, body position, chest and abdomen movement, limb movement, snoring, and other noises made during sleep. But it costs an average of $1,000 to $2,000 per night. 
And this, of course, limits its use as a screening tool. And this brings us to the end. Our study highlights the importance of, of, of precision medicine in choosing the investigations and treatment um, to the address groups based on their genetic predisposition, which will be discussed in details in the next presentation. And last but not least, we should always remember that a good physician treats the disease while the great physician treats the patient who has it. Special thanks to Dr. Mona Albaniki, Dr. Iman Hussain, Dr. Hela Hamdi, and Dr. Antoine Fahou. And a special dedication goes to the soul of the beloved Dr. Merham. Thank you. It's as marvelous. Um, I think it is one of the greatest achievements of this department. This presentation could be more professional and the presentations that is actually here are Nesmaha from a Ashat Magister or Doctora Min Candidates. Dr. Antoine, really, uh, Yani, you are a marvelous team. Thank you all very much. so impressed and surprised by this uh, amazing presentation. Uh, thanks a lot for the, the most wonderful uh, student I have ever seen. بس كانوا عايزين يقدموا جيفت لدكتور منى عشان هي سمحت لهم انهم يقدموا في الكونفرنس ف they want to thank her. أحب أشكر أنطوان على المجهود الجبار المنتور بتاعنا فعلا بيعمل مجهود في كل الاتجاهات شكرا قوي قوي أنطوان وبعدين أنا مش عايز هدية عشان أخليكم تيجوا أنا أديكم الهدية عشان أنت عملت شغل حلو خالص فشكرا جدا 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 شكرا لأنطوان قوي على المجهود الجبار شكرا فعلا ايوه لا اوف في الوسط بقى يا دكتور اوف في الوسط يا دكتور امان في الوسط يا دكتور امان في الوسط 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 في الوسط